Welcome. We are the Matterhorn Yodelers. We are three siblings that can't stop yodeling about Disney. I'm Jackie and my two brothers, Peter, Jathan. Today we are excited to talk about where our love of Disney all started. Though we all, though we all love Disney, we all have different uh, favorite parts of Disney. Come join us on our journey. <laughs> Today's podcast, we are discussing why we love Disney. J Fifth, what what is your Disney story? Um, so my Disney story is um, um, it's I'm a Disney fan because I love the products. Um, starting with animation, light action films, TV programs, the parks and the acquired products that they've done, like Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Marvel, and ESPN. Um, I love the joy of the memories that Disney Company has facilitated in life. Um, I'm a very nostalgic person, and Disney allows me to tap into those nostalgic feelings from the different periods of my life. Uh, my earliest memories of Disney comes from those uh, brand you know, uh, sugar cereals, and uh, you get those prizes. Now, I think those are illegal to get. <laughs> they probably are. I think they're illegal, and... I don't think they put it in the cereal. No, it's they don't outside. put it... outside. Yeah, it's outside the cereal now. So, like, that was kind of like... So, I remember I got one of those Disney Afternoon cartoon figurines. So, this is, like, before you're even alive, Jackie, and Peter's, like, very oh, young. Little boy. Little, yeah, little boy. Yeah, little boy. And so I remember getting a cartoon figurine, and it was it was uh, Don Canard, uh, uh, yeah, Don Canard, and it was it was kind of special growing up because uh, getting brand cereal was kind of like very special, and so we would get like it was rare to get box cereal, let alone get a toy in our cereal because either it came in a bag or cereal or it was Cheerios, and you never got any toys in Cheerios. But <laughs> let me digress, and I it was a special. Um, because I remember going to Disneyland in 91, so it was like kindergarten, and I remember seeing like the motorboat cruise, I actually had to look that up, because I just knew it was the boat rides, so it was in the area between like Small World and Matterhorn, and so yeah. I remember seeing um, Gummy Bear, Yeah, I remember Gummy Glen. <laughs> I actually do remember being on the ride. You remember being on the ride? I remember the Gummy Bear... Car, like wooden cardboard oh, yeah, it was cut very out. cheap. It was very cheap, but I do, <laughs> for some reason, I do have that memory um, of being in the boat for that. That's my only memory of the motorboats. That's impressive. Yeah. I just remember seeing the cut on and be like, oh, wow, it's my cartoons. They're here at the park. And like, that's my earliest memory. So like, I was able to establish something I like at home with the parks because we didn't really have the VHS tapes before then and then later on you got the Disney classic animation VHS tape where you know everyone can remember like opening you hear that crinkling sound yeah before <laughs> you watch those movies and me and Peter watched like Peter Pan and Robin Hood running around to the intro the jungle book those are some of the movies I just remember watching over and over and it was a part of my childhood because um, other than that what other cartoons were there like the of the American Dream, you know, like or not the the Fightful movies. Fightful, Fightful Goes West. Yeah, Fightful Goes West. Uh, American Tale. American the American Tale. Tale. Yeah, that mm-hmm. movie. That was it. You know, and so after that, it was you know watching those films. You know, I grow up and watch Indiana Jones. It was either the the American Tale or Indiana Jones at at, at Grammy's house. At Grandma's house. Yeah. 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 You would watch the one scene from Indiana Jones over and over where they're pulling out the heart. What I I, I just remember <laughs> my favorite part was like and for dessert monkey Man. brains. Monkey brains. I just loved it, and so you know the you know even though Indiana Jones wasn't Disney. Disney is acquired, and so it is. I still associated part of my childhood how Disney is, you know, taken parts and has consolidated it. And so next, you know, you got Star Wars, and that was a game changer, and all the books and the video games from there. And then you got Friday Nights with TGIF. For me, it was like Boy Meets World, and Family Matters, Step by Step, Full House. Remember Dinosaur? Dinosaur. Yeah. Talk to Mama. 
<laughs> I hated that show, but yeah, I still watched it. Everyone loves the dinosaur. Everyone loves the dinosaur. You know, there was Hanging Mr. Cooper. Hanging Mr. Cooper. Oh my goodness, that takes me back. Mr. Cooper. Mr. Mr. Yeah, and so you have like Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and so like, and then as I get older, it's ESPN and watching college football and, and NBA so I can talk to my friends. So Disney's been a part of it. And, and then the, the, the crown jewel of my Disney fandom is going to the parks with my family and, you know, able to leave the crazy world behind, the insecurities of, of puberty and adolescence and going into a safe place to explore with my imagination and ride rides with my family and create good memories. And then, you know, I like being in the Disney Park so much that I thought it'd be so much fun because Peter did college program and, you know, I was like, boy, he has great memories. And I was like, well, I'll just, I'll do it. And I thought it'd be fun. And and so I worked at uh, the college program at Walt Disney World and at Mission Space and it was a blast. And so much fun, I decided to stay there and work part-time, full-time at Magic Kingdom's Adventureland Liberty Square working at the Haunted Mansion, Magic Carpets of Aladdin, and Tiki Room, Swiss Family Treehouse. I mean, I mean, it helped develop me um, uh, later on, you know, just in my early adulthood working at Disney. And so um, Disney has been a, a big part in my evolving experiences of my life. And I will continue as I begin uh, to share some of these similar experiences with my uh, own daughter my, though she's only four months old it's never too early to get her started right so. never too early to indoctrinate <laughs> your children and that's what I said. <laughs> we've been indoctrinated by our parents so like might as well stay consistent that's, right that's right it's the family tradition <laughs> uh, it's, this is that's kind of like why i'm a disney fan it's just the backstory and just the memories and like i said i'm nostalgic and i just i love pulling back and, and feeling the joy from those memories and Disney is definitely intertwined with a lot of the memories. So of the all the attractions you worked out, which one was your favorite? Oh, it has to be Haunted Mansion. It just it was so cool to have people come up and be like, You have my dream job and I'm all like, You have my dream paycheck, you know? Like <laughs> it was just fun just to not be on where you don't have to be so angry. Or no, you have to you don't have to be so happy, and then I can just be me, and and so I was perfect there because I just had that natural resting. Like I don't want to be here. Face everyone's. Like, Why are you so angry? You know. So I was meant for the haunted mansion, and it was it was perfect. I loved it. You know, it just it was a fun experience. So, because we all know the Disney Company has many avenues behind it we have the theme parks movies and such what would you say would be your core interest within the disney company itself um i would say uh, the first thing is the parks love the parks just because of working in it you know you just become you appreciate what's going on around you and seeing how the cast members work and how much goes behind a show um, I appreciate it, but I mean, the media is a part of my life too. I mean, I've been consuming it since I was four. Yeah. So it, it's it's hard to say. I just okay. those are those are the main yeah. areas. That's cool. So Jackie, why don't you why don't you give us uh, your story? I can't remember a time when there wasn't Disney a part of my life. It was. I was, I'm the youngest of the family, and so I can't even remember my first time going to Disneyland, because we would go to Disney, at least Disneyland, every year, about. And, uh... So braggy. No. No. <laughs> we were really... I was struggling with Cheerios, and you're like, I went to Disneyland all the time. <laughs> no, but just that... It was always a part of it, so I don't remember, like, one point where it's like, I love Disney. It was just, like, already there um, since I could remember. And so when, I think when I, 
was growing up and I was like more of a teenager age that's when I really grew into like love of Disney of like movies and the music I love Disney music I would like have that big like it was like a square brick of an MP3 player. I would bring on the bus to middle school. Yeah, I think I have them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would just listen to Disney music. And all the other like cool kids would be like, listen to like rap and like the really popular music. And I was like, I want to be where the people are, you know. <laughs> and, and just listening to Disney music. And so I was always, like, classified, like, oh, you're a Disney nerd. And I, I never thought of myself as a Disney nerd. And if I compare myself today, I would not consider myself a Disney nerd. Uh, yeah, once you go to Disney World, you meet them. Like, I remember it was, like, it was D-Day. It was, like, June like June 6th. And I was, like, you know what today is? And we're, like, well, today is the day where, you know, the garbage can third from Dinosaur was painted orange, and you're just like, get away, you nerd, like, it's D-Day, like, yeah, no, I, I remember it was very interesting, because, like, I, I would classify myself as a Disney nerd, and you would run into people that would, like, challenge you on your nerdum and be like, well, can you quote the opening Disneyland speech? And I'm all like... Yeah. <laughs> it's a wizard battle where the wizard's disappointed that he's this good. It's like, oh, gosh. Oh, I guess. No, but I think my, my Disney, like, when I grew to love Disney was when I definitely started working for the park. So I did the Disney College program after both of my brothers just because I needed to be on the same level as they were. But, um... <laughs> High expectations. <laughs> <laughs> no, we always have, like, a competition of, like, oh, I have a high school diploma and you don't, and this is while I was in high school, so... I. You, you can't participate in this conversation unless you have a high school diploma. You know, that's what it was like in the house. Yes. I do remember... <laughs> Many of those conversations that I necessarily wouldn't throw out there, but definitely you two were all about that that avenue of uh, trying to exclude each other in a competitive, <laughs> in a weird competitive sense. It was kind of funny, funny to watch. So that was one part of motivation of me working for Disney, but also I always wanted to because Peter always had a fun experience, and I wanted to have that same experience, and so I decided to work um, in the hotel industry. So I worked bell service at Caribbean Beach and then front desk at Animal Kingdom Lodge, beautiful lodge. And... Plug. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsor me, no. <laughs> um, but the... But that's when I di really grew to love the business side of Disney, of how Disney does their business side of like acquiring companies and how they organize their employees and how they're able to create this atmosphere among their employees, paying them like what minimum wage or the lowest of the low. But the three years I worked there, I went from like seven dollars and twenty cents to like that was working CP and then when I went full time it was eight dollars and when I left it was like 823 or something like that. It was just <laughs> so pitiful. But just like how Disney creates this like environment where they don't pay you much, but you love the job and you work really hard at it and create this like great magical moments for guests. Um, it's just interesting how some companies, how Disney can achieve that. But if you go to try to apply it to other companies, you will not get the same um, effect. Oh yeah, like I remember like being coming from Disney and I moved back to Arizona and like I'm working for the bug company. Yeah. And I'm like spraying someone's house and someone's got a little kid there. I'm all like, oh, what you doing right there? And I remember the mom just like, 
honey, it's time to go to the room. Don't want to bother the guy. Like, who's this creeper? And it's like, like a month ago, I'm like talking to kids, doing interactions and magical moments. I was like, oh, magical moments don't exist outside of Magic Kingdom. This is this is a little weird. I'm just the creeper with like a bug spray thing. Oh, yeah, okay. you can't call little kids princesses and pirates or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but it was just an interesting how Disney was able to create that atmosphere. I may not agree with it, but I can appreciate how they do it. And so I kind of it liked the business side, but I also love the parks and the hotel side of Disney. Um, I have a hospitality degree, which I love hotel industry and customer service. And so this was just kind of like my perfect role, and that's kind of how I grew to love Disney today. So Jackie, do you regret not going into an attraction like Peter and I? No, I do not regret working inside the park because when I was working at the resort, I was able to separate that, and I never really got tired of going to the parks uh, and being at the park. So we would, I would work, you know, five days a week and you would have like two days off. Usually that was kind of your schedule as a college program, if you were lucky. And, uh, and so I made a, I made it a, a priority to make sure on my two days off, I would be at the park because it's like one a lifetime opportunity to go to Disney World. And so I was like, okay, make sure all my laundry's done before uh, my day off and so that way I could go to the park. So I would always be at the park even if it was just for a couple hours but I think I was able to do that because I wasn't working inside the park. Like if I was working at Magic Kingdom, I think I would get tired of Magic Kingdom and seeing it every day. You do. It depends on the person, I would say. Because I don't think, I mean, for me, I, I... Again, I'm 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 a big fat Disney nerd, so I never got tired of it, and I was in it every single day of the week. Like any opportunity I could take, I I was in a park. Like any time I have like my roommates be like, oh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go, and this is probably gonna date me, even though like it's it's weird that I'm like. <laughs> I'm going to sound really old with, like, the things that I got to experience on my college program. Back in my day. Exactly. Back in my day, downtown Disney had nightclubs. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, we're all going. It's 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 college program. Uh, it's it's cast member day. The, the nightclubs, we're all going. I'm like, I'm was going Tuesday? to. Was it Tuesday? I don't remember what day. It was Tuesday or Thursday. It was one of those middle of the week days. But I was like, you're going, I'm going to Epcot. Like, I don't know about you. I'm going to go to, I'm going to watch Illuminations. You know, like, um, <laughs> but no, yeah, I, I totally get it. I mean, I can totally see how some people need that separation uh, and they were in able to uh, fully enjoy their time in the parks without it becoming too much. Because I can tell you there were times where I'm all like, what am I going to do today? Let's see how long I can sit in front of Cinderella's castle before I get tired of it. And the answer was eight hours. <laughs> Bust out maps and you just use it as a little nap. Yeah, I watched Cinderella Ration about six times uh, that day. Uh, saw every performance. Talked to a couple people that actually recognized me from my attraction. That was kind of fun. But... It's always weird when that happens. Yes. And it's always fun when uh, you, when I worked at one attraction, tell them no, they can't do something, and then go to another attraction, start working there mid shift, and then have them try to look. Well, at the haunted mansion is like I just walked to you at the haunted mansion. Do you not recognize me? Oh, it is you. <laughs> yes. See, I worked at the resort, and if people remembered you, it was because of a bad thing. <laughs> so when most I, of mine were bad. <laughs> so when. I, whenever I worked at Caribbean Beach and someone lost a luggage and they'd be like yelling, you, you ruined my vacation, I would be like, I hope I don't see them at the park. <laughs> <laughs> I am the one that ruined my vacation. 
Hi, I ruined your vacation. <laughs> it's almost like you should be knighted at Disney as an employee. Like, you all ruined our vacation, <laughs> Lord. Here we go. It should be a rite of passage or something. So, Jackie, if you did do an attraction, what attraction would you do to try to, like, like, over, like, try to one-up your brothers? Because, I mean, we're, we did really we were get the, 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 the high end, and we'll get into mine in a little bit. Yeah, time. it's hard to beat Haunted Mansion, and Peter was Tower of Terror, so it's like, how do you one-up that for attraction? Maybe pirates? They do have good socks. Yeah, they do have that has a fun stripy socks. It's it's a fun costume, I would say. I would say their costumes up there on one of the more interesting ones. I mean, if we're talking about today, obviously somewhere in Star Wars land would be pretty awesome. Yeah, Rise of the Resistance. Rise of the Resistance. Rise of the Resistance became my new favorite like cast member role, like that would be. Out of the loop. I know you're out of the loop. You haven't gone yet, but yeah, that's definitely a role you would enjoy. You would. I so think we would. You, we would all get into that You would that be role. perfect for it, but uh, yeah, I would say pirates. As far as back when I, uh, when a role existed when I was working there, I would say pirates probably, mm. or or Jungle Cruise. I don't think I'm skilled enough to do Jungle Cruise. I don't think I can come up with some of those jokes. Or oh, it's all scripted. Them. It's all scripted. Oh, they, yeah, they don't. For the most part, like they say, these are the jokes you're allowed to say. And what it, the, it ignites when you are able to get away with your. Which, granted, that's when most CPs, CPs are doing it. So ones. that's when you usually get some of the better shows. Oh, it was at best. night because you get the more uh, unique jokes. Yeah. I've got some sure. stories, but okay. okay. Yes. So, Peter, what about your story? My story, very similar to JP, Japheth's uh, story. Um, Japheth. Japheth. <laughs> Japheth. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, you know, honestly, like, apparently, I didn't even realize this, the, 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 the boat, the gummy bear boat ride was before Disney World, but... Apparently, that's my first Disney memory was uh, the gummy ship. But uh, um, it blows my mind because but, you're young. You're, yes. I mean, this is like '91, so you're like three. three. Yeah, I was like three. But that, that's the only Jackie part. I can't remember the... anything past seven. Like <laughs> I literally can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, but honestly, when it really started for me was when we went to Disney World. I think that trip was the trip that when again I was four. <laughs> <laughs> I was still quite young. Actually, no, I was still three because we were in June. Turning four. I was turning four. I was about to turn four. Um, but I don't know what it was. Like, I couldn't tell you what, what my emotions were, but I really grew attached to the theme parks and the magic I really felt there, being seeing my favorite Disney characters like Goofy and Mickey and, you know, Baloo and all those fun Disney characters in the park and then you know our dad he compiled our whole Disneyland trip on videotapes which I watched those like religiously like I honestly like I watched those things so much those copies are, are probably so damaged because of how many times <laughs> I've watched that footage even up till now like they mom and dad they gave me the the copy they gave me the digital copy of them and like i I've, i think i've watched it about three or four times since then as an adult married with kids going back watching myself at the age of three four at disney what's, world what's the famous quote oh well the famous yeah. quote well set the scene set the scene is we're leaving disney world we're at the airport and, you know, it's one of those, like, perfect commercial moments where my dad's filming me. I'm looking at the airplane um, right before we get on, and I go, I want to go to Disney World. I want to go to Disney World. Do you know what I was thinking when you were saying that? 
I was thinking, shut up, you're so whiny. Like, you were whining the whole trip. And then, it's true, I probably was. It was the cutest moment ever, but yet he was just like, oh, look at it. And I was like, ugh, oh, shut up. And yet, we all have those moments, even today as an adult, where you're just sitting in, like, in an office, working, you go, I want to go to Disney World. Yeah. But, yeah, so, like, that trip definitely was the starting path of my true indoctrination and obsession with Disney. Then eventually, like, over time, I mean, obviously there were the movies that I would watch all the time. Uh, and it wasn't until, I think it was like fourth grade was when I first, when I did my first biography on Walt Disney. Um, and that's kind of what sent me down that rabbit hole of truly becoming obsessed. That's when I wanted to become an Imagineer. That's like, that's when like, my whole point in life was Disney, like everything. I was obsessed with the music. We played the music game in the car where yes. we would have to, which dad, we didn't, we didn't figure this out till we were older, but back in the day when we had listened to them on cassette tapes, obviously they're in a specific order. <laughs> As kids, we don't realize There's this. There's no shuffle? There's no <laughs> shuffle on the cassette tapes. And so like, we're all like, What's that song? Uh, 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 Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid. And like that, we'd be like, oh, the next one's Aladdin, and the next one's... Uh, <laughs> next one's Beauty and the Beast. Next one's one <laughs> Snow of, White. One of my stories that I will tell people to kind of describe how much Peter loves <laughs> Disney <laughs> is that one day after school, he made me sit in a chair, and he would... Sit in that chair. He would play, like, a Disney movie, like, song, and then the Broadway version. Yeah. And he'd be like, is this the movie, or is this the Broadway? <laughs> I was gone for this. Yeah, I yeah remember we were gone. I remember but like, this. He would do that, and we probably did this for an hour. I was like, no, can, can I it. be done? And you're like, no, 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 one more, one more. And we kept on going. So it's like, the best way I could describe. Yeah, I, I was... I was obsessive to the point where I can be like, oh, yes, you can hear the chimes better here. So that's obviously the Broadway version compared to the the animated version. So, yeah, I was the big, big Disney nerd. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we kept going. We went to Disney a lot. Eventually, we got to the point where we were going, like, at least once a year, um, traveling out to California. So that just, that became... Uh, our vacation, I mean, our dad kind of had that motto-ish thing where he says, if it's not Disney, it's not a vacation. Um, so that's just kind of... It did kind of taint other vacations. It totally did. Yeah. Like, remember we went to Universal Studios? Oh, that was... And, like, yeah. they gave us the option. Do you want to go to Disneyland or do you want to go to Universal Studios? Like, oh, let's go to Universal Studios. And I remember, like, I was like, that was a regret. <laughs> I was so yeah. disappointed. Yeah. Um, the highlight for that trip was, like, we rode the E.T. ride, and yeah. you used to submit your name, and you used to say yes. your name. And I was only blown away because they would say Dad's name, but then they would see some gibberish, and I was like, he's speaking his other language, but it was my name. He was like, go home, Jonathan. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it was just like, that was the only highlight I got from that whole trip. And I was like, I could have yeah. gone to Disneyland. It probably would have been better. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, like, that was one of the things, besides our family's obsession with board games, uh, our Disneyland vacations was like the one thing that like really united us as a family. Like, yes, uh, those are honest. One of the greatest, happiest moments of our lives are on those vacations, and so uh, it's definitely made an impact in my life. Um, and then my senior year, uh, I actually had the same language arts teacher for my junior and senior year, so. When we had to do biographies, she saw that it was Walt Disney. Well, there's a funny story about my reports on Walt Disney. So back back when I was in high school, we used to have to turn in our homework on this website, turnitin.com, which checked for <laughs> plagiarism. And so my senior year, I submitted my, my Walt Disney biography, and it came back 98% plagiarized. And... My teacher was all like, oh boy, what's he plagiarizing? And she looked, and it was my report from the year prior. <laughs> and she asked me, he's like, should I even read this? Or should I just give you the same grade? It's a different, it's different. <laughs> I always changed my 
my Walt Disney uh, biographies focusing on different aspects, but yeah, you would deal with same subject matter, same lines, quotes, and things like that. So yeah, there was going to be a lot of similarities. Um, was it a good grade? Was it a good I don't grade? remember. <laughs> it was knowing me, it was probably like a D. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't very good in school. D for Disney. D for Disney. That's right. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. <laughs> um, but then my language arts teacher, she she pulled me over at the end of class one day. She goes, "Hey, you might be interested in this," and she handed me the thing for the college program, which actually. I am different from you guys because actually I did not do the college program. I did the career start program, which was I had no college. <laughs> I just went straight from high school right to Disney. So I want because I would you know attribute because I had no idea about a college program that that even existed prior to my my uh, teacher uh, pointing that out to me. And so I went with my dad. We went and did watched a little video presentation, which now they probably all do that online. They don't even meet up anymore, probably. Mine was online. Yeah. 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 That was like ten up. years ago. Yeah. So like this was back in my day, we had interviews face to face for the college program, um, but there was like five people there that night, and. The one thing I will always remember, me and my dad always like hitting our heads on some of these people that were there. They're like, you know, trying to give out the free swag, like giving out free t-shirts and pencils or whatnot. And they're like asking trivia questions. And um, eventually like the people were not getting them. And so they just had to resort to like, oh, what's your favorite Disney character? And someone would be like, Bugs Bunny. And my dad would just be like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, what are you doing here? Um, but I do remember, and this is one of my favorite stories I tell people about how I got my job working at the Tower of Terror, was I was in the interview, and she, she saw my, 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 my list of wants, and I only put I wanted to work attractions. Um, she goes, you sure you don't want to work food That's service? That's the biggest trap when they ask you Oh, that absolutely. It's, oh, are you okay? Or can you, or is it an option to work custodial or no. fast? No, 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 it's no. like the biggest trap. Always big say no. No. <laughs> no. I'd rather, I'd rather not do this than... And so I only had attractions there. And then she goes, so what attraction would you want to work at? And I go, well, my friends would think I would work really well at the Haunted Mansion or at the Tower of Terror. And she goes, really? Why is that? And she goes, oh, because I'm really creepy. <laughs> And she like looked at me like, what is going on? And then I just kind of stared back at her, and then we just both started laughing hysterically. And then long story short, I got exactly what I wanted. And when, even when I got there, I forgot what she looked like, but she didn't forget me. Because like, as soon as I got to Florida, like I walked in to get like my room keys and like signing in for the first time. And she's all like, hey, I recruited him! I recruited him! And I'm all like... <laughs> and she was even there when I took my traditions class. Like, oh, wow. yeah, and she was like, "Yeah, I, I recruited him." And I'm like, "Okay, whatever." Uh, <laughs> you guys um, all suck. <laughs> <laughs> and she was very your proud. Your service, your custodial. Oh, that, that was always the fun. <laughs> You're doing thing, laundry. Yeah, like. <laughs> so yeah, and I loved my job at the Tower of Terror. Um, and the one thing that I really took it helped me get out of my my shell. I was. I was a loner. I kept to myself. All my friends were super popular, but I was not. So um, I didn't have, uh, I wasn't very outgoing. But when I worked, when I went to Disney, I told myself that like this was going to be different than high school. I was going to get out of my shell. And I did. And I went out of my way to get into my role as the creepy bellhop. And I thought I did a pretty good job well enough that like I had some managers that didn't like some of the things I did but I did have some that did like the things that I did enough that she he would always bring the VIPs to my elevator so I could spiel for them uh, so that was always cool I got to see a bunch of VIPs that most of which I had no idea who they were but they were VIPs that the managers were were taking up um, so yeah I did that first semester and uh, and you know, 
Disney's always been a very big part of my life. Both the theme parks, I'm a big Disney history buff right now. Like, I'm really fascinated with the Eisner era of Disney. Like, that section of Disney history is very interesting to me. Um, and, uh, and, and music. Like, that's, like, I would always tell people, like, how long, like, and this was a while ago, so the, the music collection, the Disney music collection we have now is vastly larger now. But back then, I, I, I did an experiment of how long it would take to play through all the different Disney music we had. And it literally took five full days, nonstop playing, <laughs> of just Disney music. And this includes the different variants of It's a Small World, like the 30,000 versions of it's a small world that there are and and things like that so like and so I, yeah like the music's always been a very important part that brings me into the magic and I love so much um but yeah that's I know I feel like I've been kind of rambling and talking on for a while here but um that's that and I feel like that's me and a nut, me and my Disney in a nutshell. Even though I feel like I've been talking forever here, so I felt like that way for us too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like Peter is the biggest fan out of both. No, of stop! Don't <laughs> stop! Keep, keep going! Keep going! <laughs> um, so, Peter, if I you did attraction, so yes, if you couldn't do, let's say, like haunted mansion or the Tower of Terror. Mm -hmm. Back then. Back then. What okay. ride would you have liked to work on during your career start? Career CP start. wannabe was a, experience. I was a CT, not CP. a CP. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Um, so probably something that would go on my more theatrical side. So I would probably lean more on a Jungle Cruise sort of role, one or a great movie ride at the time. Um, those are very popular. For those those are very popular that people. require a little bit more pizzazz, pizzazz <laughs> to, to, to do in a way that people enjoy. Um, the best great movie ride experience was probably a hungover guy where he's just like, get away, you wicked witch. <laughs> Ugh, like, it was the best. <laughs> that was worth it, yes. So, you would have done far better than most people, probably. <laughs> so, oh, watch out, there's an alien popping out of the ceiling. Watch <laughs> out, he's gonna get ya. <laughs> Today, what? If you went back to work for Disney, any role, what would it be? I mean, I think I've, I've already said I would work at Rise, but now I feel like that's a cop out right now because that's 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 a great role because you're playing two different parts when you when you work that attraction, and so and there's there's a lot more creativity there. Um, I would love to be a tour guide. Again, because that kind of goes to my um, history side. I love spewing random Disney facts and sharing my, my know-it-all with people. Like One of the things that my role has become recently uh, is showing people who have had bad experiences, especially like going to Disneyland and having a bad time and taking them and showing them how you can have the best vacation Ever and I've yet to have an unsatisfied person come with me that's like, yeah, it was okay. No, most of the time they're like, man, you know how to do it. And I'm like, that's right. As soon as you know how to do it, it's fun. It's true. It takes a little while to like master the skill of enjoying a park at Disney. Absolutely. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Only the truest of truest people can truly endure through a day the truest park. experience <laughs> that <laughs> anyone truly can experience <laughs> yes the truly a truly a true. <laughs> true, 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 true true I just remember growing up I was so tired we were at Disneyland and I was like I want to go home and my father was like 
no, we will be here till it closes. <laughs> yeah. so, and I've kind of adopted that rule now. And uh, <laughs> my brother can tell me, can tell you that uh, from the last time we went together, it was all like, no, we're going to, we've got here at opening. We're going to be here to close at midnight. And he stuck it out. Our wives, they, they did not want to, but he stuck it out with me. And that was, that was definitely a struggle because I know now that I have kids, I have to wait till they get a little bit older till I can really do that, push them to, to stay out till midnight because we took them um, this last trip and I'm literally like wobbling my oldest son to, to walking to our hotel because he's so asleep but he's big enough that I can't carry him anymore and so like I'm like wobbling him across the parking lots and yeah. That reminds me when we went with dad and we got like extra magic hours early and it was like <laughs> seven o'clock and the park closed at 12 yeah and i remember it was like 11 o'clock we're like we're at thunder mountain it was probably like a third or fourth time of the day and i remember there's nobody in line really and we're just going and i just stop and i'd sit on the floor and then the line <laughs> would move and i would just kind of just drag my body in the queue <laughs> and i'm just like i don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> this isn't fun but yeah just you look back and you're like oh yeah those those were fun times Hindsight, you know. <laughs> yeah. Now that I'm a little older, I don't think I could do all days anymore. You can do it. Believe in yourself. <laughs> you can do it. But going home and taking a nap is great too. No, that's like that's like a betrayal of everything. <laughs> if anything, you just go in great moments with Mr. Lincoln. You can take oh, a nap in there. That's true. Cool. You go off. sit just do a few rounds of that and then you're good. Okay. Chairs are a bit more comfortable than the tiki room. Tiki room, you'd have to get up against the wall because. But you can lay down. They have benches. If, well, I guess now you can with social distancing. They, you can. Well, now they might yell at you for yelling for laying down. So. That's all the time we have. Thanks for joining us and giving to know our Disney side. Let us know what makes you a Disney fan. Discuss with your family and friends if you would rather stay at home and watch a Disney movie or go to the parks from open to close. You can follow us on our Facebook page, Instagram, or email us at matterhornyodlers at gmail.com on what you would rather do. Next time, we'll be battling different Disney characters against each other. And remember, the 3 o'clock parade starts at 3 o'clock. Hora, 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 hora,